Yehovah Malak Olam Olamad Yehovah Malak Yami Rakesh Yehovah Gadol Makarian Theos Yehovah Yadonai Yehovah Elohim Kurios Theos Panta Kreta Kurios Theos Pistos Elda at Yehovah El Emuna Yehova Ibasilion Kurios Otios O Panta Kreta Basilios Basilion Kai Kurios Kurion Yehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christon Isunton Kurion Kurion Nimohagion Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Yehova Ishmal Kam Yehova Shamma El Nakum Yehova El Nakum Yapa Natsak Israel La Shaker Gava Gava Triambos Yehova Isus Christos Ton Christon Isunton Kurion Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Zoe Logas Dolas Tontios Derek Emunabakar Mishfat Shava Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim, Elohim, Gadol, Gadol, Geburah. The Megalogai of Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim, is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry, of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the power given to each and every believer in this church age, being indwelled permanently by Lord God the Holy Ghost, so that when they are being, becoming the demands of the word of the Lord of God fulfilled in their lives, as we can look an incident over there in the case of Elisha, when the band of the people, they were going and they digged and kept or put the dead body into the tomb of Elisha, we see that man becoming alive and rising up and standing again. And such is the power greater one given for each and every believer in this church age, when they could use their body to become that which is the prescription demands of the word of the Lord of a God. Not just you die in your sicknesses, but your body has been given to give, even to such kind of a unbelieving men. And when their when their dead bodies are been, or when you come in touch with them, it should be the power like Elisha giving them back to life, even though Elisha was dead. When they touched the bones of Elisha, he could come back to life, though he was a dead man. Greater impact than that we can have in this church age, when we are walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost performing that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord our God. Such kind of a thing 
where the world may be shocked to know as such the christians may also be shocked to know because the things which have been pertaining to the word of the lord of god which have been recorded and kept for us they demand to live such kind of a life a life pertaining to be called as a grammatias as leviticus chapter 21 goes to teach for us in particular verse number 23 mentioning about the blemish kind of the pastor teachers or the ministers who shall not approach unto the lord of a god or in simple words the word over here which has been used they shall not enter into the veil but we have now the unveiled ministry in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit as second corinthians chapter 3 in verse number 17 and 18 because we have now the spirit of the lord of a god which where is the spirit of the lord of a god there is liberty so we are no longer under the veiled ministry but we are in the unveiled ministry but here when we look upon this particular verse of leviticus chapter 21 in verse number 22 and 23 first of all the blemish kind of man who failed to emphasize the importance of becoming disciples growing up into grammatias in the lord and then the second category who never emphasized this people to become disciples but they would make themselves to use the word absolute jackasses following rituals but no reality teaching them not the depth of the word of the lord entertaining or giving them the things that which could be a ritual pleasing methods but not and never what exactly is in the church age that demands that we should fulfill in this unveiled ministry they are making your bodies to be as a great sacrifice of a sacrifice for dagon as we read yesterday from the book of judges chapter 16 the way how you would become a great sacrifice your body would become a great sacrifice to dagon when you neglect to know that your body has been given to become disciples of the word of the lord the body what has been given for us is to be absolutely fit for the work of the lord of a god as we find today in isaiah chapter 9 in verse number 6 as it says for unto us a child is been born the word lord lord twice being used over there emphasizes every believer should grow up into a disciple you have been born as a disciple john 1 12 so over here unto us a child is been born the emphasis is that you have to be a disciple the reason why you have to be a disciple from there on you have to grow up into grammatical is that you can pass out of that curtain or that veil ministry which has been told for us now in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to fulfill matthew 13:52 followed by matthew 28:18 through 22 or 18 through 20 in our lives demands that you go out from that veil ministry or surpass that veil ministry why because you could be greater than the effect of the bones of elisha the man elisha what we look we have to learn that in second kings chapter 13 in verses 19 through 21 the same thing what we read in deuteronomy 432 on the face of the earth from the time of the man being made have you ever heard such kind of a thing and he says over there in same mark chapter 13 again in matthew chapter 24 he shall send forth his angels and he shall take the elect from the four corners of this earth You know, dear brethren, you are in such kind of a complete plan of Lord God that you cannot make up your body to be sickened to death. Even when you die, if someone touches the bones of your body, he says through Elisha, they will come back to life. Why? Because Elisha had the double power like asking to Elijah to give him. And he says, you are asking a tough thing. But if you would look the mantle, if you would look me going up into heaven, then you can find it and you can get it. and the same man before his death which has been recorded in second kings 13 verse number 19 he goes to reprimand the king and he says you would have struck five or six times why did you stop only at three times you know the greater the zeal you become to be greater scribes in the lord of a god like a ready scribe bible records for us if you are a ready scribe if you are a person who are been using your body first of all your body is been used as a living sacrifice to lord god provided you are carrying your cross every day as a disciple and coming to become the word of the lord if you are not becoming that your body is been indirectly prepared for a great sacrifice of a sacrifice to dagon as we have been reading that in 
Judges 16.23. And that Dagon is a way when you have left the path of becoming disciple. Your body should be as a living sacrifice, Romans 12, 1, 23, but it becomes Dagon. You know what a power God the Father has given to us flesh, so that when we have been becoming, growing up into grammatias, like five or six times, like a scribe, as Elisha was, not just once, but five or six times as he demands, even the other person's dead body, when it touches our bones, it would make them to come to life, far less we could die or worry and die in our sickness, or perish in our sickness, rather than fulfilling the great commission of our law. The pattern for us, as he says in 1 John 2, 6, we have to walk according to the pattern of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 9, in verse 6, For unto us a child has been given, and we shall look and consider in that verse what God the Father has prepared and kept, so that we could be well qualified to know the power given to us. If we are growing up into scribes, to go exceed the whale ministry, the curtain, and become the demand of the word of the Lord. So we shall look that after this prayer, sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pile of wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord, my rock, my God, what is prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory. Infinitely divine Holy Father, on the face of the earth, the things what you have recorded and kept when we talk about the things of which of which of such kind of a great authority that even the dead man bones when they have been coming up to be with a dead body coming up to be in touch with the bones of Elisha, they would come back to life. Such a great life you have given for each and every believer in this church age to enjoy not just the ministry of endowment, but enablement which you have given for us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to make every believer's body as a living sacrifice unto thee, far less they could make their body to be in the standards of perishing, a worship or a sacrifice to Dagon. So, Father, as we go and study the things, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message only for the praise of your glory for which cause you have given us one more day to learn about thy great attributes and thy great power wherewith the world has never known what a great word you have given for us and that through the three declaration of the word of the Lord of our God how we can mold over this body to be a source of life even we die when the dead body could touch because that's the power you gave to us to have such kind of a zeal to walk in fellowship of thee all the days of our life. So Father as we study these things we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten and to challenge us by this message for your glory. In Christ's name we pray Father. Amen. In Leviticus chapter 21, when we are looking upon the blemish kind of pastor teachers or the flattering titles or the ministers, wherewith we have read from blind to the broken testicle, having such kind of a thing, they shall not come to offer the fire offerings of the Lord of God. The fire offerings of the Lord of God, what we read, they resemble us to understand that they have to be in their body, the vigor and valor, which is going to think according to the demands of becoming grown-up scribe, not just joining as a disciple, but to growing up into as a great scribes. The same thing we read further in Leviticus 21-22, saying that, Lakom Eloha, or the bread of God, which is of the holiness of the holiness and of the holiness ye shall eat. Why? Because the bread Lakom meant to say, first he has to know the importance of preaching disciple. Or if it doesn't become the intention of making disciples, as he said over there in Isaiah 9, Isaiah 6, saying that, Whom shall I send? The word shall lack what we read. Whom shall, who shall go for us? Or whom shall we send? He's emphasizing, if you are a minister in the word of the Lord of God, the number one duty or the primary work of you is to go and make disciples. Preaching or making disciples is the ministry. That's what he said for us in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the same thing in Colossians. 1, 24 through 29, wherewith he said, I cannot pay the vicarious suffering of Christ. None can pay that. What he has gone through the cross, but we can pay at least a little part of the role of the mental agony of my Christ, which is of a constant worry to the Lord of a God, that this man whom he has called and chosen, called to be the elected ones of the Lord, he has called for his work. His work is to go and make disciples of all the nations. His work is to go and make the things pertaining to 1 Timothy 2, 4, which none to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. Having such kind of a great and glorious work in our hands, he says, who shall go for us? 
And the people who are going to go, the people who are going to come on behalf of him are the ones who are going to make disciples. So the word lakom, the bread, you haven't really eaten the true bread of the Lord of a God. Though Christ our Lord of a God said, I am the true bread. The true bread is a discipleship orientation, whether you believe it or whether you love to listen unto it or whether you look into these videos or not, we seldom care. But the truth is, if you are not a disciple, your body is not for Christ. Your body has been well prepared to become a sacrifice for Dagon. That's what we were reading from Judges 16.23 and further emphasizes of that. Your body should be in such a way like a grown-up scribe that even a dead body, when it has been put upon you, they should come back to life like an instant of Elisha. And on the face of the earth, no one could have made such kind of a record to say that how it could be possible. Just touching the bones of a man who has been dead, called to be the servant of the Lord of a God, who did his work, who had a zeal to even to teach to the king, saying that, why you stopped only thrice? Why couldn't you go for five? Five or six times. And there we have five or six. He mentions the number five or six. Why you didn't hit the arrow five or six times? The number five is grace. The number six is what a man can become a great equipment or a great weapon to Lord God in the day of his battle, provided when you are grown up minimum six times like a scribe. Six times. Under the number of grace, five times given to you. Because the man number which has been assigned over here for him is five. That is the grace. In that grace number assigned to you, at least six times you need to write the word of Lord God. That's the zeal you need to have, not just three times. Hmm. But the sad part is there are not even people who have read the Bible upon their knees at least once to become that they will join as a disciple now and as a grammatias or a scribes, they should write minimum six times. Having your body used for such kind of a six times, you will have the power greater than Elisha. And what was Elisha had? He was having the power when the dead body was being put upon him, touched his bones, they came back to life. Far less you can die and perish in your sins, the sins caused by the sicknesses by devil upon you. Because devil loves to give you anything on this earth apart from becoming a disciple to the word of the Lord of God. So the sicknesses which have been put upon your flesh is preparing your body through the catalyst as we read the doctors. The catalyst are slowing process or speedening up the process to destroy the chemical equilibrium of your body. And they're presenting your body as a greater sacrifice, a sacrifice of a sacrifice to take God. Why? Because your body never in your lifetime it has been trained to become disciple. It has never become to train to become like a scribe. The word lacom, the bread of the Lord. The spiritual man of Christ where you have to come to learn the word of the Lord of a God, the purpose of the church. Where the manifold wisdom of Lord God has to be taught. The church being the ground and pillar of truth. And the Malachi 2.7 teaches why you should come to the pastor teacher to learn Bible doctrine. You come to take in the spiritual bread. Because he says in Luke 4.4, 4, man does not live by bread alone. But by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord of a God, every word which proceedeth, the word, every word over there it mentions for us, Remata declaration. And that Remata, it's not Logos. Remata work is of the pastor teacher to daily teach you the word of the Lord of a God and equip you to become grammaty as joined as disciples in Christ. The Remata declaration of the pastor teacher every day. And the people should come there to learn the word of God. The real word of God called to be the lacom. The bread of God. You know we're here for this blemish kind of pastor teachers or the blemish kind of ministers over in Leviticus 21. He's giving a strict warning. You shall not sustain. You shall not handle my fire offerings of a fire one because you cannot look into it. First you come and eat lacom of God. Though you are a minister. Meant to say, first come and look. Your life should be disciple oriented. You should preach for them to become disciple oriented. Lacum of Lord God. 
And that lakum of Lord God will make you to understand that you have to cross out now the veil. Why the veil? If you are not a scribe, you cannot cross the veil. And when you are crossing that veil, you have now for us the unveiled ministry, as people would love to preach upon this Good Friday. When the veil was being torn apart into two pieces, there is nothing between you and us when he has been crucified on the cross. That's the reason he says over there in John 1 to 12, he has given the power or exuse the authority to become the sons of God. And that power of God, what he has given unto us, he's making us to go and make disciples of all the nations. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Because you are being given greater power than the power of Elisha. For Elisha, it was endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But for us, we have an unveiled ministry in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith we go from glory to glory. And having such kind of a ministry, how you could tie your body in sickness. You know, dear brethren, you are not able to understand the word living soul. Wherewith you are now called from living soul to become quickening spirit. First Corinthians 15, we teach about that. We learn about that from there. Living soul is called Zao Suke. Quickening spirit is called Zoponian. Followed by the word pneuma, spirit. Zao suke is what you have been given to understand the wreath of life, the crown of life. After believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have this great purpose in the Lord to live like a way you no longer into the biological realm, but into the zao, the spiritual life of realm. And from there, God doesn't want you to be just be there like a living soul or the word called to be Zao Suke. He doesn't want you to use that. He wants you to become quickening spirit. Zopo Nian, meant to say the greater depths, the greater wonders, the greatest privileges that has been ever given for us because you have been told to conform to the image of Christ. You have been called to be like the thinking of Christ on this world. So you have been given this great word having zoponian. And this First Corinthians chapter 15, zoponian, it emphasizes for us the point that we are being called to look and to taste the greater, greater privileges of all time that a man can ever know on this earth. So he emphasizes over here, if you have this Bible in First Corinthians chapter 15, he says that we have been sown in corruption and we will be risen in corruption, having these things for us in First Corinthians 15.45, the word quickening, the strong code number, triple to seven, zoponian, he meant to say that which is causing by the spiritual power to arose and invigorate or to restore to such kind of a life which is into greater powers. Not just like Elijah, bones being touched. Greater powers in the sense you can live a life sick and free. Provided you join as a disciple, your body should be trained to become like a disciple. If your body is not trained to be like a disciple, then it will become a greater sacrifice of a sacrifice to Dagon gods on this earth. And already people have been fished out with such Dagon gods. Because they love to put into their brain the thinking and the standards of what they have achieved on this earth. And they love to give that which is good. But none of the words of the Lord our God will ever fail. You know, you the thing what you see over here in Deuteronomy chapter 4 in verse 32 or learning this incident of Second Kings chapter 13 in verse number 20, getting back to life or 20 and 21, getting back to life. This is something where it could be very strange to the face of the earth. You know, greater strange than this when he says over there in Deuteronomy 4.32 as well as in this passage, the greatest strange is that you are Second Corinthians 5.17, your kinecatesis in the law. That never happened earlier. Even the Old Testament prophets were not aware that the church age will be such kind of a great impact. 
an impact wherewith you have been called to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, if ever you breathe, if ever you live, so that you could now march, not just walk, but stow I can't make all the things in a proper order to look greater, deep things from the word of the Lord my God. You know how you ought to be representing Christ, confirming to the image of Christ, having the same thinking of Christ. We cannot be still dead ones. Zao po ian. The word over here, what we find, to look greater depths, greater secrets, greater invigoration things. But you know why you die, second? Because you don't look the Bible what the way it teaches. Exodus 15, 26 and 27. None of the sicknesses, he said. And the way how he's going to deliver his elected ones. You know, because these bodies have been used for the Lord of a God only to become as a scribe growing up into grammatias, joined as disciples, not just once but six times to fulfill the thinking of Elisha. Because the earth should be filled with the glory of Lord God, Numbers fourteen twenty one, because Exodus fifteen eighteen, it is the Lord of a God who shall reign forever and forever. And God the Father has given to us this earth. To fill it up with his word. Any pressure in this life, he says, put it up with the word of the Lord of a God and you can find a great truth in there, a great meaning, a great definition. Why do you worry and die sickness? First, you give your body as a disciple-oriented work to the Lord. Give this flesh to Christ. How simple is the logic with my Lord? You know, the flattering titles ministers who have been there in Leviticus 21 from blind till to the broken testicles when they have entered into the ministry they are not giving you the lacum of God they are not making you to become the disciples of the word of the Lord and since they don't make you to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God like the way how Elihu says over there in Job 32 in verse number 6 I fear where you people I will not be taught in the church age to become disciples, but in return you believe it or not. Every believer in Christ is born disciple to the Lord. Technon believer, John 1 to 12. You have been born in this church age to be a disciple, nothing else than that. The will and the vigor of your life, even the body of you when you die, your bones. If someone touches, if any dead body touches your bones, it would come to life greater than the life than Elisha. Elisha had endowment. We have enablement. We have been permanently indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The fellowship is temporary. Whenever we sin either by thought, word or deed, we are going to lose the fellowship. So using the privacy of our priesthood, we confess our sins and we get back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because we have to be grown-up scribes, not just once, but six times. But you don't even believe that you, are a, that you are a disciple to the Lord born. You don't even believe that you survive every day because of the remata declaration of the pastor teacher, what he teaches to you. You don't even make up your life to know that your body should be as a living sacrifice to God the Father, but rather you're preparing your body to become a sacrifice of a sacrifice to dig on gods. You're never believing the truth. So much of the time you're spending upon lies and being constantly bombarded with lies. You're thinking though the veil has been opened up, why can't we go deeper things, First Corinthians 2.14? Why can't we learn many, many deep things of the word of the Lord? Because you're thinking the veil is opened up, but yet you haven't crossed that veil. You know how to cross that veil? The word curtain, what we find over here for us in the Hebrew, it says for us, as it says first, the word lakam you have to take, called to be a disciple oriented. And then furthermore, day by day, you build a wall of fortification, the thing which is going to be in your body to pump, that will be your blood. So he says, day by day, take in the word of the Lord, that is the Jehovah Elohim over here mentioned to be God, wherewith he says, have your vigor and valor energy day by day to take these things and learn and become the representatives of this truth. So the the first thing he teaches over here, Lakom Elohim, and then where it is, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. 
the things pertaining to God the Father, the things pertaining to God the Son, the things pertaining to God the Holy Ghost. And that what you do, he says, eat what you have to eat. It is not just you keep that information in your mind, collected now to become like a scribe, but apply that in making disciples to the Lord. And then in verse number 23, he says, the veil, the Hebrew word for veil over here is called to be poreket. The strong code number assigned is 6532. Poreket meant to say a curtain or a veil, which is of harshness, from the word perek, cruelty, which meant to say to have fracture or rigor or having something that to be breaking apart, severity. You know what is that fracture or severity or breaking apart? Dying to the world, operating unto Christ, not breaking off your bones. So, he further emphasizes that it is in the pictographical representation for this word, whale, perek or perekot. It meant to say, first, open up your mouth if ever you live on this earth as divine oracles. You open up your mouth according to the thinking of the word of the Lord, not the thinking of the men, not the things where this, this world could ever think of. You know how you have to open up your mouth and thinking of your head? Like a scribe. That's the will, then you can break it up. And who did this? We have an example for us in the book of Isaiah chapter 42. Example of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He emphasizes over here for us in verse number 20, saying that, Seeing many things, but you absorb not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. You know, seeing many things, the word you see to see. Ra'a, ra'a, you go to inspect how much rub. Why? Because the world has been bombarding you with many, many things to divert your mind, not to become a scribe, neither to join as a disciple, neither to understand every day. If you don't carry your cross and follow my Christ, you're not worthy of his calling. Constantly just look back into your smartphones once. How much of your time you're spending with your smartphones? How much of your time you're spending with the details of life? How much of your time you're really looking to become a disciple so that you can protect your flesh from Dagon sacrifice unto a living sacrifice for Christ? You know, when you're reaching up into Dagon sacrifice, sicknesses begins in you. Because you love to approach a person called to be catalyst. And he tries to slow down your process or speed up your process of chemical equilibrium and having such drugs in your body because your body has not been used to become a disciple. You know how foolish you are living on this earth. Your bodies are called to be the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God and be of that though your body has been given by God the Father which should be used for him, 1 Corinthians 6.19, being purchased with a great price. You cannot pay that price. Your bodies are not your own. That belongs to Christ. You have to become a disciple growing up into grammatias. But you say, I cannot kneel down before the presence of the Lord. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. So what you're tending to become, you're tending to become a greater sacrifice to Dagon. How many of the people, they would be really scribes? How many of the people, they might have knelt and written the word of the Lord of a God? The key to cross that veil or to go beyond that veil demands you open up your mouth thinking in the word of the Lord of a God that you have to become a scribe. How many ministers are preaching to you the fact that if you have been crossing that veil, but the problem is, though the veil has been opened up, people are thinking now we have the access of Lord God, the Holy Ghost to us, but they're not crossing that veil. Because they, if they're not scribes, they cannot cross that veil. They cannot come to look deeper things of the Lord God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So constantly what Satan does, it loves to constantly bombard you with many, many things. That's what he says over here. Seeing many things, Isaiah 40 to 20, the Hebrew says, you see to see much. You know, in this world, you have been constantly bombarded. Today, look into your smartphone. How much you have been looking into data connectivity? How many things you have been looking in there? Can't you understand? The way how the people would love to act in reality 
and the people what they now imitate that reality you know certainly we should really feel ashamed though the bible says imitate christ imitate apostle paul and do the things pertaining to the glory of lord god the father just go back and on your tiktok you will understand if there is a original song and the original actor or film actor for example in india or any other person they have pictureized that song what do you call that choreography of that song the people who are practicing tiktoks they would really outdate them or in the sense they would say that is nothing what they have done look into my way of tiktok the way how i can imitate them the way how i can better be imitation in them what they have done that is nothing just look and these people would love to prove these are greater than them <laughs> Can't you prove to be greater as the way, as Apostle Paul said, I look unto Christ, you look unto me and you walk. And the same Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians 5.1, Imitators as technon children in Christ be to God the Father in heaven. And as Christ Jesus our Lord our God has walked, having the meat of him to be the will of God the Father. Is there any other meat for you to do on this earth? Accept the meat of becoming the will of God the Father. But today we have many other meats to do. That's what he says over here. Constantly. To see, they see many things. But comparing to Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, who is our role model, who, whom we have to imitate, from this passage of Isaiah chapter 42 in verse number 20, we need to look and we need to learn. Though he saw many things, now you have the things pertaining to your Google and your internet, you can go and access many things. But since Christ, our Lord, our God, is omniscient, he knows how the people would come by cooking up their false stories. That time, then existing Gnosticism, Nicolaitanians, way of doctrine. All the things, he refuted them. Because he knew only the marvelous revolution of the word of Lord God he was. The men can never understand, though the people may understand, thinking about, they have learned lot many things about this physical body. That a blood can pump 60,000 miles in a day. Or 96,000 kilometers in a day. So you have so much of blood, so much of capillaries. So they, may so they may discover many things. And they may prove, oh, this might be anatomy of man. This might be this. This might be that. This might be the cardiac muscle. This might be this. So they may try to come and taste about these things. Absorbing those things, he says. Many might have come, but he did not look into them because he knew what is the purpose of this flesh. He knew what is the power when you become like a scribe, the dead body would, could touch you or the bones when you die. He says, they came to life. And in the church age, how much more we have to be in the unveiled ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to achieve greater things, to achieve the quickening spirit of life. But you people are still perishing in your sicknesses, perishing in your alibis, perishing in your worries, perishing in your pressures of life, perishing in many, many more things. Why? Because you are not able to become the true servant of Yehovah Elohim. The true servant of Yehovah Elohim, what we look over here, he emphasizes, is there anyone like my servant who is blind, who is bluff, who has been to the standards of the world? He never saw the viewpoint of men. He never heard the viewpoint of men. He knew only one thing, that right from the beginning, it is the word of Lord God. And even when Satan tempts him after 40 days of fasting, It is the process of becoming the word of Lord God. You know, this 40 days of fasting, what these people, they're practicing in the Lent. They should know now, they will be crucified. And before this 40 days of fasting, they should realize that they also will be tempted. When they have been tempted, they should come to know the way how Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, refuted or he answered back to Satan. 
by the word of Lord God himself. In these 40 days, you will not learn that. Though Christ our Lord our God, 40 days, he was preparing for the ministry. But you're not preparing for the ministry, you're preparing for the things so that you could end up in a way that could be good for you, as Job 36, 11 and 12 teaches to us. If you obey, you will have prosperity of days. If you obey, you will see many years that you want to look. But if you don't obey, you will die in your own sins that you don't want to look. So just want to have prosperity of days, but you're not able to be well prepared to look that if each and anything that goes in your mind or the people are talking about, you should defend them through the word of the Lord. The way how Satan tempts my Christ to emphasize that the ministry of a pastor teacher day by day, which is much needed to teach the word of Lord God. In the present Christendom, the things have been absolutely corrupted. They are not in the standards of the word of the Lord of a God as that Cartoon Network show which, have told, which, have, which we have told you about the chinsha. Just look into your eyes of the look. They have black background upon that a white eye, pupil. But we have white background and upon that we have a black pupil. At exact opposite of our right nature what God made. The same thing, though it may be a cartoon network, the same thing has been practiced in our pulpits because men are not able to become that which is the demand of the word of the Lord of a God in going and making disciples of all the nations, in going and making to become well prepared to be blind and deaf to the world and talk nothing but the word of the Lord. So Christ our Lord of a God during that 40 days of fasting, he comes back and he teaches to us the importance that man does not live by bread alone, but by remata declaration of the pastor teacher. Every day has to emphasize the word of the Lord of a God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Though we have a lot many things to teach, the time is not sufficient for us. Because the world is not happy to listen for great discourses. They would say, who would listen for one hour? Who would listen for two hours? Who is having time to look such kind of a crooked face, having no beard shaved, having no proper head to set up? They want something that which could attract them, neatly shaved, appearing to be attractive to others. <laughs> None of the Jews were without shaved. None of the Jews were with shave, sorry. Though it might be the trend of them. David said, stand in that place till you could grow back your beard and then come to this place. When he sent as a spies, they thought. He, went, he sent them for welfare, good fare, good things to be asked about them. But they thought they sent him like a spy. Your appearance is needed for them. As the word of Lord God emphasizes in First uh, Samuel chapter 16, when he was getting about to be the realm of Eliab or the other one Ahithalab or the other one called to be Shammai or the word what it is. So he says, you look only outward, but I look inward. The people don't want the things pertaining to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They want attraction. So what? You have an app, video to MP3. Just take it, convert it. Listen to the voice if you are interested. But we know very well you don't have time for the deep things of God. The way have you so now to Christ, the way have you respect unto the word of the Lord of a God, reject it, and at the same time you have been looking to get many, many things on this earth, the way have you so back, the way have you deal with my Christ, the same thing is going to deal back with you. So be careful, dear brethren, with my Lord. The imagination, the motivations... The secret things of your heart, he knows it very well. And the same way have you neglect, the same way you will be inculcated. Because you never want to become a disciple. You know the two things what we read over there in the Gospel of Matthew. For the first son he said, go and do the work. And then he said, I will go. And he did not go afterwards. But the second son again, he said, go and do the work. He said, no, but afterwards he repented. He changed his mind and he went to the work. So he asked the disciples, who was the right worker? Who was the right son? So they say, the one who went to do the work of the Lord. The same thing today, you may be thinking, you want to become a disciple to the Lord of a God and you may reject. 
But as you reach your sicknesses, as you look in your life, the troubles, as you go on to cry unto the Lord God, without paying the vast was of Lord God, and then yet God the Father is gracious enough to give you one more day, so that you can get back to your senses. It is not the food, it is not the medicine that is going to survive you. It is the word of Lord God and the burden which Lord God the Father has given to you to become a disciple, because your body has been is been designed to be a disciple to the word of the Lord God. If your body is not been taking that process, if your body is not been fed by the word of the Lord of God and carrying that cross every day, you will die before your time. The youth will perish, he said. Before the half of the days, even you will not even look into that. As we read that in the book of Psalms. The wicked will perish, not even looking even half of the days. Why? Because your body has been designed to be the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God. But never in your life you use that body to become the disciples of the word of the Lord. Again, you love to have your indifference. You love to have the things pertaining to Christ saying that we would come only weekly once to the church. For whom you are coming and for what purpose you are trying to come to the church. What benefit it is if you come to Christ? There will be a great joy in the heaven at the repentance of a true sinner. A sinner who has been repented, the change of mind, he doesn't walk in the same path. He doesn't reside in the same area. He has been transformed, he is dead now to the world and is alive to Christ. But you people are so happy to be. <laughs> Look into the way of your life. Trying to be good. When the time is very critical for you. Until God the Father could recover you back, you'll be happy with the pastor. And afterwards you will show back your true colors. That's how the church has been driven today in our pulpits, dear brethren. So who can be like my servant? Many, many things, they have been constantly bombarding your brain. But he says, no. He was not alive to those things because he knew very well the revolution of the word of the Lord of a God is the only one thing which sustains. Apart from the revolution of the word of Lord God, there is nothing on this earth that can sustain you. So in simple words over here, he says in 40 to 20 of Isaiah, many things, you know, they love to become, they love to become that energy which drives them, you know, the thinking that which motivates them, the thinking that which directs them. So in your head, he says like that other kind of energy, you may have many things, the word many meant to say, which will try to make up your body to be thinking in such a way. And he says he was not observing. The word absorb meant to say he did not take the thought process. You know, the first thing what you learn from here. If anyone would come and teach and talk to you about many things, including your physical sicknesses on this earth, you should ask, is this there in the Bible? Is this there in the Bible? He said to them, go and sin no more. Why? And why are you going through that sicknesses? Because you haven't been in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the five cycles of disciplines mentioned in Deuteronomy 28. Being a failure in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you expect deliverance from the Lord. You're trying to become or to trying to rob away the glory of the Lord of a God and you're thinking that you can live a life of peace, a life of joy, a life of great strength. No, dear brethren, you cannot. You're robbing away from the Lord that which is the right duty for you to do. And you're trying to have peace. You're trying to gain that which is for your convenience, for your benefit. And you know how much of the people today have been constantly bombarded in this earth with sicknesses? Really, dear brethren, they're not able to realize the reason for sicknesses is their own negligence not to become a disciple to the word of the Lord. The reason for troubles in their life is their own negligence not to take up their cross every day and follow my Christ. They have not been found upright and righteous in the sight of the Lord of a God as Job was. And the reason why Job took it every day. 
Why Job made it up every day? Even for the sins of their own sons and daughters, if ever they have been cursed in their mind for Christ, so he would come and give a sacrifice on behalf of their sons. Because he wanted to have such kind of a pure relationship with God. And such was a man who was put to test. Not every knucklehead who think devil is behind them. Satan will be behind them or behind those people who are really taking up their cross every day and following my Christ every day. Renovating the standards of their thinking according to the demands of the word of the Lord. It will not be behind them who are walking to be drunkards, who are walking to be prostitutes, who are walking to be every mannerism of the lusts of the flesh. Satan is not persecuting them. It is their own lust which is leading them. Therefore, in James chapter 4, in verse number 8, the solution he gives for us, resist the devil. The reason how and why you have to resist the devil, because if you don't resist the devil or walk opposite to the standards of this devil and walk according to the standards of the Holy Spirit of Lord God, then never you will overcome your life on this earth. So he says in James 4, 7, resist, walk opposite to the teachings of devil. What are the teachings of devil? You will find dear brethren in very simple terms in the Barian church, what they diligently search the scriptures. If you also search the scriptures diligently, you will find what are the teachings of devil because they are not teaching to you every day the word of the Lord. Anything which is contrary to the real plan of Lord God, which is called to take up your cross every day and follow my Christ, as in the place of Ephesus for three years, how we taught them day and night, as in the place where he's going to emphasize, day by day, carry your cross and follow me. Day and night meditate upon the word of the Lord of our God. Seven times a day, praise Lord God the Father. As we have these things to learn, as we have these things to be trained up, as we have to emphasize upon these things on this earth, if anything that which is contrary, in fact, indeed, every day taking or partaking in the elements of the Lord of a God, if you neglect that, that's devil teachings for you. You are not resisting the devil. Resisting the devil is to walk opposite. You are now in alignment with the devil. You have become one with the devil. Look into your practices in your pulpits. How can you escape your second death? Revolution chapter 2 when he emphasizes, Be faithful till to the end of your life. Be faithful so that I would give you the crown of life, the wreath of life, the wreath of Zao. Again, the word not be yours. Not for the things you are faithful in your medical research or scientific research or XYZ research in engineering dominion or any other thing. Be faithful in that he didn't say. He said, be faithful in your Zao life, not Bios life. Being faithful in your Bios life is research in each and everything what you do on this earth for the welfare or the benefit of the human. You, have, you may be faithful in producing great many things. You know, again, one more catalyst. God designed man in his image. Salam, when we learn that word, it emphasizes the thought process of you should be a disciple oriented and that should be the blood which drives you. That's the word Salam. And as he writes the word e -I -Khan, in the image of Lord God, as we read this word in Colossians chapter 3 in verse number 10, confirming to the image of Lord God which he has created us. The word image over here meant to say that which is renewed into the standards which true Christians are transformed, wherewith into the standards of the blessed state of mind which Christ possesses. People may think that they may be having a most uh, heavenly body. No, that is after the death when I'm going to get to the resurrection body. But blessed state of mind which Christ our Lord our God possesses. That's e -I -Khan. What is a blessed state? Day by day, have your thought process to become the disciple of the word of the Lord. Without having any excuse. Day by day, become the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God. Whatsoever the world may say, resist the devil. 
walk opposite. But you are now walking with the devil. You are not walking with the Holy Spirit of Lord God controlling in you. Therefore you reject to come and carry your cross every day. Therefore you reject to look upon your eternal life. Though we have calculated and told for you for a span of one year, they taught them the word of Lord God at a place of Antioch and the disciples who were trained, they were called to be the Christians and the span of the teaching of the time was for minimum 8 to 10 hours a day. And when we look upon that 3,650 hours to compete with that time, morning one hour, evening one hour, if we give it to be five years, if it is for one hour a day, it will be for 10 years. If it is weekly once, it will be 71 years, yet you don't feel and yet you love to become to be a member in the heaven are you faithful to the Zao life he said be faithful then I will give you the crown of life are you faithful in your Zao life to the Lord so that you could live like a quickening spirit Zo po -ian, the word Zo plus po -o meant to say first the life of a true the true life what we find now followed by that which will be the only independent existence which you are living now you don't have any other Bios life you have a life only to have a blessed state which Christ our Lord our God had that mind so we have been called now to renew it, the standards of our thinking to confirm to the image of Christ according to that blessed teaching of Christ what we have been given for us in Ephesians 4 to have the same stature or the thinking of Christ that blessed state of mind every believer should possess but today you're not possessing that blessed state of mind you're having the blessed state of rebellion nature of Satan in you Therefore, you don't learn the word of God. Though your body should be a source of becoming, the bones of Elisha, the way how it is. Your body now should be in such a way that if anyone could touch, as the way the men they walk doing the signs and wonders of Christ, Peter or Paul, even the kerchiefs which fell. But today, you know what? <laughs> Open up your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 13. Here also you have the kerchiefs or the aprons. When he's talking about this woman, he says in verse number 17, Likewise, you son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesies out of their own heart, and prophesies you against them, and say, Thus said the Lord God, Woe to the woman that show that sieve pillows. And the way have they sowing to sow pillows? By the authority of their mouth in their thinking. And the word pillows, what we have over here is that they are making a replacement. They, if there is no true edification for you to learn the word of Lord God, the false edification they put, what is that? Speaking in tongues, doing miracles. So when you speak in tongues, you think you have the Holy Ghost. And that's the way how they have been putting you into pillows. As such today, the much of the present Christendom which went like a standards of warring, to use the word, warring after Pentecostal crowds. The crowds where they never teach the word of God. They have this work they call to themselves that they have been given this gift of talking in tongues. And that's not at all tongues. It's Angastramutha's demon controlling their vocal cords and allowed to talk in that. So they have been sieving pillows. For what? To produce their armholes. The word arm meant to say, no matter whatever may be the pressure, you have now in your life the peace of God, the grace of God. So they say, have this discipleship oriented program for you. The discipleship of talking in tongues. The discipleship of feeding the poor. The discipleship of taking care of those who are widows and orphans. Armholes. They first see you the pillow and then they're going to put you into such armholes. And what they make? They build up kerchiefs. Here we have. The Hebrew word for kerchief is called to be mispaka. And the word mispaka 
paka which is called again a long wail and in this long wail they put a pressure in your mouth in such a standards that you can never become a disciple thinking oriented one to grow up into grammatius and crack that wail if you have been stuck up in this long wail or miss paka you are never going to cross leviticus 21 23 which says that curtain he shall not cross because this man hasn't read or taken the bread of god and having to cross that veil taking that bread you should become a disciple growing up into grammatias that is at least once you should write the word of lord god and you think the sharat responsibility given to a minister is just to be from blind to broken testicles ministry without emphasizing you all to become the disciples of the word of the lord but he says no first let him take the lakum of god let him become a disciple from the holiness of the holiness of the holiness referring to god the father god the son and lord god the holy ghost and then let him eat then let him become like a grammatias and then let him go and make disciples though he has done so he says let him not enter because he cannot look into the deep things of the word of the lord of a god not just to teach the surface things but to look deep things of the word of the lord of a god which has been given for us to preach the deeper things so for a unquickening spirit as he said over there in first corinthians 2:14 he shall guide you into deeper things extreme things bathos but you have been happy to be sieved with pillows having a support for your arm poles and what they do they make up this mispaka called to be as that which has been a suppression of spreading out so they put a pressure in your life in such a manner that they love to open up the pressure to say that no need to become a disciple so where they put they put it for your head why if your thinking has been corrupted if your thinking is not been looking into the word of lord god because their brethren christ jesus our lord of our god prayed for us in john chapter 17 in verse number 17 where many people are forgetting that words sanctify them by what the truth the truth is the word of god If your head is not been renovated by the standards of the thinking of the word of the Lord of a God, it's as good as to say there is no rosh, no head. And as we read that in Psalms fifty-eight, this will be like the aborted ones. Never they will see the sun. Why? Because in the sun, if they would look, they should become disciple oriented. They should change their thinking. but if you are not been disciple oriented or changing your thinking to become the word of the lord of a god your eyes good as not seen the sun and your head is not been renovated so upon the head of every stator so from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun they have this process of making you to become the blood to hunt your soul why they want to hunt because they say if you are having any pressures in your perceptions we can give you a great prayer we can make you to become this but never they will emphasize the reason for your failure in life is that you haven't become a disciple to the word of the lord the reason for your failure in your teaching is purely because you never emphasize of making exegetical standards of disciples in your pulpits and they love to say we will pray if god the father wouldn't have been so gracious and merciful you all would have been washed long ago he know what the investment what he has put upon each and every believer in christ in this church age greater than the body of elisha the bones of elisha every believer if he would grow up minimum 5 or 6 times as scribe and the grace number 5 is been used for man for number 6 5 or 6 times if it would become a scribe your body would be something brilliant even the bones were touched by a dead body they would come back to life far less you can have your kerchief ministry to prove to this world hunting the souls of this people making them to look to the word hunt meant to say putting pressure putting pressure in such a way that they will never stand they want to look every perception of their thought in the view point of help are asking help of others pray for us pray for us but they never want to listen the word of lord god they never want to edify in the word of lord god 
They would simply go and ask, running around the country, pray for us, pray for us, pray for us, pray for us. And they would say, prayer would work magic, dear brethren. The only prayer, what we are going to look in the Bible, is the greatest prayers of apostle prayers. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Philippians 1, Colossians 1. Your spiritual eyes to be enlightened so that you could know the deep wisdom of the word of the Lord of a God. The great prayer for us by Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God on this earth, John 17. Just look, do you have any material things over there? He is emphasizing your spiritual edification. He is emphasizing your life, that which could be after death. How you have to be, how you have to reside. But these people, they say, we will pray for you, we will pray for your quick healing. For what quick healing you will get and we will pray for them. Again, to go back and sin. Again, to prepare their body to be a greater sacrifice for Dagon. Never they make up their life to become a living sacrifice to the word of Lord God. Never they will make up their life to become that which is to be a disciple for the word of Lord God. They want for what? They want only for Dagons. They think they have passed the ministry of Vail. But they are still stuck up in the kerchief of a veil which has been spread out in the pressures of life. Because never they open up their mouth to have a head that could make them to become a grammatias. You know, Paul was called, too much of learning has caused you to become mad. That word learning is called to be grammatias. Grammatias are the one who go to write the word of Lord God. As Ezra was already scribe, Isaiah was a scribe, Ezekiel was a scribe. Writing to us the importance of this life to become like a scribe, to fulfill Matthew 13, 52, in comparison with Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the work what we have in going and making disciples of all the nations, teaching the truth, people are preaching to you the resistance of devil. And what is that resistance of devil? Inculcating in your mind not and never to become the disciples of the word of the Lord. Satan resists. The reason why Satan resists, it knows very well, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. It knows very well, you can trample down Satan under your feet. It knows very well, the life what you have in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, through the word of Lord God, operating and guiding and leading you is something absolutely brilliant. All the time, enjoy your fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Make up your life to be the will of God the Father. Make up your will to be absolutely prison for Christ. And fight the Lord's battle. Just look your deliverance. Just look your life. How great it would be. How magnifying it would be. Or in simple words, how worthy it would be to get our righteous robes in the presence of God the Father. To say we walk with Him in white. Lucas, shining forth the word of Lord God in our lives. In order to shine forth in that lamp, you have to have oil. Oil referring back to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In order to have that oil, you should always have pure relationship with Christ. And pure relationship in Christ can never be until unless you have been necrosate, put to death the deeds of the flesh of this earth. And what are the deeds of the flesh of this earth? It will ignore you never to become a disciple to the word of the Lord. It will never make it to become a grammatias to Christ. It will cause you to become that which is absolutely vain and vague in this entirety of life. And when you are not becoming a disciple to the word of the Lord of a God, for sure you are preparing your body for sicknesses. So, dear brethren, hunting your souls with the kerchief ministry. Therefore, we read over here in, in James chapter 4, how we need to get back. Resist the devil, walk opposite to devil, and he will vanish off. And since we look, the house of prayer has become den of thieves and from den of thieves it has become now Satan's copulation point in producing false pastor teachers. If you men don't vanish in your mind the teachings of false things, if you don't vanish the false things are nothing but neglecting to teach the truth every day. 
your business, your duty for Christ as a minister, as the work of the Lord of a God is to teach word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. Ayota upon ayota and carrera upon carrera, day by day. That's your only bona fide duty. You're called for that work. If you're an evangelist, go back and preach evangelism. If you're a pastor teacher, come back and preach the word of Lord God every day. Exegete the passages in the authority and ability given for us according to the gift of God the Father. Don't become that kind of a minister from blind to broken testicles. Who never knew the ministry of becoming or making disciples of my Christ on this earth. So he says, draw nigh to God. Resist in the sense, walk opposite. And the word draw nigh, the word nigh called to be eggizo. And the word agus meant to say, to come closer to God. As Jews all the time they opposed those who are alien from God and his blessings. The rabbis used the term to make nigh as equivalent to make like a proselyte. That means once again, dedicate yourselves. So he says, to make like a proselyte or to become that which is to the great squeezing form of your life, to squeeze out the things which are against the word of Lord God and to squeeze in or grab in the things that which are in a car to be at hand with Lord God. So dear brethren, drawing nigh to Christ is most important for us. So he says, draw nigh to Theos and he will draw nigh to you. If you're becoming a disciple, if you're making up your body to cross that whale, he's going to help you to cross that whale. In that sense, when you're growing up into grammatias, he will help you to become double grammatias to the Lord because he wants to become minimum six times grammatias on this earth so that you can have the power like Elisha, the bones of Elisha. On the face of the earth, no one could have understood about these things. How could a man of being a dead body could go and touch the bones of Elisha and is coming back to life? The same thing what he says over there in Deuteronomy chapter 4 in verse 32, on the face of the earth, there can never be such kind of a thing what he has instructed for us. But greater than this, both incidents, Second Corinthians 5, being a new creation in the Lord, kinekatesis, having something great to enjoy. Only in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, drawing nigh unto him, drawing close unto him, come to him like a disciple growing up into Grammatias, he would take care of you like that disciple-oriented Grammatias in the Lord. The privileges of becoming a disciple and growing up into Grammatias and the care what you have is above all or it is different in comparison to the ordinary believer, now you may have equal privilege and equal opportunity, but the protection, the care, the privilege, you know how to say the rank, that would be different. Because you will be surrounded by the things pertaining to the word of Lord God in such a sense that the devil one cannot even touch you. No worry of your sicknesses because you will never be sickened. The people are perishing in their sicknesses, but you talk to them the glory of God and you tell them, come back to the will of God. And God the Father knows how to guide you, how to come close unto you in a sense, when you're coming close to become like a grammatia has grown up in the Lord. That level is different. As people would simply come, as the way you sow, you know how the, uh, how the word he says, the way what you sow that you will reap in Galatians, in the same thing, what the way you look in your, uh, in your uh, uh, mirror, the same thing will reflect back. So no man looking into the mirror as James 1, he writes again the same thing over here, he forgot that not how he looks. But he looks the same what he is. The same thing with you, the way how you sow or the way how you nigh close unto God, if it is not in the realm of becoming a true disciple growing up into grammatias, no matter what it is, putting all the things aside and trying to become a disciple growing up into grammatias, if you don't have that zeal, if you don't have that desire, if you don't have that thing to fill on this earth with the glory of Lord God the Father, the way what you sow, the way what you have a desire, the same thing is going to come close unto you. The same magnitude and intensity what you put, the same magnitude and intensity you will get. So draw close unto God, He will draw close unto you. 
If you come to him with a true heart to become our disciple growing up into grammar tears, he will prepare you with that protection so that no matter what, though there may be people talking about many things, seeing many, he will not observe. Hearing many, he will not hear. You know, the only thing for your body to be protected, dear brethren, on this earth is to become a disciple is to grow up into grammar tears, is to fulfill John 1 to well in your life in practical way, though you have been given that at the moment of your spiritual birth. And from there on, John 1 to well, you have the purpose of growing up to become grammar tears, Matthew 13, 52. From there on, you need to become that which we call to be in the fellowship as Matthew 28, 18 to 20, to go and make disciples of all the nations. You have such kind of a great true burden life in Christ. Your body has not been given just to die half of your age. Like a wicked. Not to die in your youth. Your body has been given to witness to this perishing and unbelieving world that it is Lord God alone who reigneth. And that's what he says. He will never slip away his commands. He will make the world to become disciples of the word of the Lord God. And that's the duty what he has given for us right now in the church age. But dear brethren, how much you are really drawing close unto God. The pure, sincere love, the way how they draw close, the same thing you also come close with that same pure sincere love with the Lord and he constantly looks upon such men who would show forth who would bestow forth such kind of a pure sincere love towards my Christ because he wants to look to come close unto you so what does he say cleanse the first thing catharsis Cleanse your stains, cleanse your moral sense, cleanse the things which have been absolutely against the word of Lord God. Cleanse your hands. Why? Your hands are now called to first to be the workers of the word of the Lord. Your hands should be now to become the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God. Your hands should now become to be that you write the word of Lord of a God as scribes. The first thing in Matthew 22 we read, tie up his hands and then his legs. His hands, because never he used his hands to become a scribe. Becoming a scribe, he will know the burden of this life. He will know the purpose of this life. He will have a new definition. He will have a new meaning for this life. But are not looking to such life. No meaning, no definition, no purpose. So if you have your hands cleansed by that he meant to say if you become a grammatias growing up in the word of the Lord of God to the praise of his glory day by day. Growing up to become that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord of God day by day. You will understand the purpose of your feet now. You can't be the same. You know how to illustrate this. At the cost of my Lord's name and the Lord's ark as uh, in the incident of Bathsheba, Uriah the Hittite, he comes to tell to David, how could I, when the Lord's ark has been left over in the battlefield, how could I go and enjoy with my wife? David would have said, wait, I will also come. They would have taken and go and protect the, the ark of the covenant. Because until and unless it is Jehovah who establishes them as we have this verse for us in First Chronicles chapter 15, in verse number uh, 31, it has to be, in First Chronicles chapter 15, in verse number 31 or 20, 23, somewhere it has to be. It's 23, right? Correct. He says over here, Berechia and Elkanah were doorkeepers for the ark. The word Berechia meant to say, Jehovah blesses. And the word Elkanah meant to say that it is God who has possessed, God who has created. 
and this church age he has possessed, he has created. Why? Because he has blessed it through his son so that we should be the doorkeepers, then existing the Ark of the Covenant, now the word of Lord God, by refraining our every step from evil way. So now David would have taken the heed of Uriah the Hittite. He would have gone to protect the Ark of the Covenant, but he did not do so. And when Absalom has been rebelling, he's walking naked, in the sense barefooted crying out, weeping and wailing. He would have given that same care first to the Ark of the Covenant in this life. He would have learnt a lesson. He would have protected, he would have been protected by the Lord of a God. No need of weeping, no need of requesting others to take care of my son. Deal gently with my son. The way how you neglect the work of the Lord of a God, though God has possessed, it has been you to understand that before the foundation of the world, Lord God the Father has chosen us to be the praise of His glory. And He has establishing us because it is what He has created us to be the blessed ones to protect to become that which is the thinking of Christ to this world. And what we have to protect? We have to protect the Ark of the Covenant, which is residing in us. The glory of the true living Lord of a God, which is in us. But you are making up your body to become the Dagon temple sacrificing instruments. So the first thing, cleanse. The reason why he asks you to cleanse is to make sure that you walk by becoming ascribed to the will of God the Father. And then he calls you the work of his sinners. You know why you are sinners? You may say we are pure, we are working this, we are doing this. No, you are harmartias, you are missing the mark. You are becoming that which is not the word of Lord God. So he says, you are sinners, not free from sin. And when the sin is gone, the sickness is gone. When the sin is there, sickness resides. Very simple logic for you all to understand. What is that sin? Not becoming disciples is your great sin. After believing in Christ, but before believing in Christ, what is the sin? John 16, 8 through 11. Because you haven't believed in Christ, that's the sin for you. But after believing in Christ, what is the sin? If you're not becoming a grammatias joined as disciple, then that's the sin for you. So he further emphasizes, purify what your hearts. Make your hearts to be cleansed, pure. Why? Because the heart is the way how discipleship-oriented program should be pumped in. Your heart is the way wherewith your body now resides to become the disciples of the word of the Lord. So that this organ which has been used to circulate the blood, so it has been regarded to be the seat of life, so the vigor and valor of your spiritual center and seat of life, the things pertaining to the thoughts, passions, desires, appetites, affections, purposes, have to be according to the things pertaining to a discipleship program. So he says, purify your hearts, and he calls you dip sukhas. You know why dip sukhas? You are wavering, you are uncertain. Therefore, he says in Second Peter chapter three, the people who are unwavering, not having a firm mind to become a disciple, they use the scriptures for their own destruction. Dear brethren. God the Father teaches to come close. Eggers, come nigh. To become the will of God to be executed in you. And the word like a proselyte, where you come to become an approach. And such kind of a proselyte, what he teaches to us, he says, come close so that he will come close unto you. If you protect the Ark of the Covenant, if David would have done so, he wouldn't have been cried at the rebellion of Absalom. 
today as well, if you would come close to protect the will of God the Father, which is to go and make disciples of all the nations, there is nothing of a thing that could make you to be sickened or worried on this life, wherewith you can think that God is not possible or God cannot or God is not able to deliver you. And each and everything is able to deliver us out because of the sovereign grace of God provided. We first go to do the will of God the Father in our life. So, dear brethren, you are drawing close unto God. He will draw close unto you. By resisting the devil, learning to crack out that curtain of a veil, because you have been born unto become that which is right and good in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Since we have been told in Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is been born, and upon his shoulder, the burden of the Lord of a God, what is going to give? The same burden of which has been passed on for us. We cannot make this body to die sickened. So you have to use this body to become the disciple. You have to become that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord of a God as Grammatias. So he says over here in Isaiah chapter 9, For upon him, upon his shoulder, the responsibility was being kept. So we look over here saying that for unto us a boy, a child is been born, meant to say lad, lad. It meant to say disciple oriented in each and every perception. And having the vigor and valor of a son he has been given to us so that the burden or the chieftainship meant to say the government will be upon his shoulder. What is the chieftainship? Over here we call to be masher, which is meant to say having pressure in their life no matter whatever it is, they get back every thought into captivity for Christ. So the chief tainship meant to say the government, the things that which you have been built up, the things that is going to be a ruling party. So no matter whatever may be the pressure, he says, get every thought into captivity for Christ. Make it up to be the chief tainship. How on shoulder blade of him, this word is very, very important. The word shoulder blade of him is nothing but first, his thought process will be completely grammatias oriented or a scribe oriented and that's what it will pump his blood. And if every believer has been called to be the son of God, given them the power or authority to become the sons of God, having them to be as many sons unto his glory, then the chieftainship first should be the word of God to reign in you. And that should be upon your shoulder blade. How you get into that shoulder blade? The word over here, what we look, it meant to say. First, you will be having a thought process according to uh, grammatias growing up. And this word shoulder, shekem. And the word shekem over here meant to say, having your thought process to become a grammatias, and that will be the thing of your pumping in your blood. So he says, to go up early, to rise up and to take up the shoulder, to become the Lord of the Lord of a God. The greater you rise up early and become meant to say, while you are in youth carrying the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God, to fulfill that which is the demand of the word of the Lord. That's called to be the shoulder blood. Earlier to carry, the sooner the better. As he says, youth you have overcome, because in that youth of age you will be falling for lusts, but the youth have overcome the wicked one. That's a very early load you have taken. The same thing what Christ of Lord of God emphasizes from age 11 to age 30. But today people are emphasizing from age 11 to age 30 so that they could settle their life and they are working out a life on this earth, but they are not working out a life in the heaven. So they are making you not to carry the yoke or the load of the Lord of God, God, while you are still in youth and you're losing it out. From age 11 to 30, he prepared himself for the ministry. But now if you look, these people, they're never preparing for the ministry. And what they're trying to do all the days of this life, preparing you for the details of life from age 5 itself. So he says the shoulder blade with an early age. It's an early age. You should become a disciple oriented to become a grammatias. That should be the standards of your blood. And he says his name shall be called. Now we are having these characters to be manifested on this earth. 
Every believer has this character. You are called to conform to the image of Christ. First, his name meant to say the thought process of you is in accord with the blood of the word of the Lord of a God. So, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, you have this process of renovating standards of your thinking. The first thing they will call you as marvelous. The word marvelous, pale. Why? Because your mouth is opened up to become a disciple oriented to Christ. And this is for every believer in Christ. First, marvelous. Second, counseling. No matter whatever may be the pressures of life, you get them to the viewpoint of the word of the Lord of a God as to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So the first thing you will be called as marvelous or wonderful. The second one called to be the counselor, which meant to say to get every thought into captivity for Christ, no matter what may be the pressure. The third one is called to be El Gebura. And the strong code number is 410, referring back to every man in the form of flesh. El refers back to take the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God to become a disciple. And what you become, you become a Gabor man. You erect in you, in your body, the thinking of Christ. No, you're walking Christ, living Christ. The fourth one, father of future. And the word father of future here meant to say, for us, his viewpoint is completely fixed upon his perceptions. And that perception is completely driven by the vigor and valor of the Aleph energy of the word of the Lord. And thus his body will be referring back to be that which is the glory of God perception factor for the truth or for the glory of God. So dear brethren, father of future, and then he's called the prince of peace. No matter whatever may be the pressure, having to get all your burdens and worries to Christ, you will be once again shalom. What is that shalom? Your thought process as a disciple oriented one in your blood. That's shalom. These things have to be manifested in every believer. If Christ our Lord of our God was been born unto us and given now for us many sons after the standards of his glory, prayed and given for us the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being requested or begged. John 14 or Romans 14, when we read that word, he begged before him in John 14, 16, not Romans. So he gave for us the same Holy Spirit of Lord God. Then we ought to manifest the six characters, the characters of Pale, called to open up your mouth as disciple oriented, trained one, the one counseling, no matter what may be the pressure, you look into the thinking of Christ. Christ, the third El Gebura, having to carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God, you have established in your body nothing but the erected structure of the thinking of Christ. You are called to be the father of future because you will be making up to get every thought into the perception, into the captivity for Christ as a trained one in your body. And then you will be called to be as the chief, no matter what may be the pressure, you will try to have an umbilical cord relationship of shalom with the Lord because that's your character. That's what you have been designed. So no matter what may be the thought process, you have in you to be the disciple oriented and that will be your blood. And that's what the thing which driven by Christ. Far less we can think of the bones of Elisha. He said, I have the power to lay down my life. I have the power to take it back. As people would love to quote for you in this season of uh, Good Wednesday or Good Friday, whatever you call, but it has to be Good Wednesday. It is not just the bones of Elisha, dear brethren. It's what the vigor and valor of Christ provided your body is a disciple-oriented one. Provided your body can understand, we are now called to be the sons of Lord God in the sense of wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And that's possible only when you become a disciple oriented one, growing up into grammatias. The shoulder blade, the responsibility upon you, as sooner the better you come to take. Because you have to confirm to the image of Christ. The word pale, once again called to be marvelous or wonderful, it says opening up your mouth to be the disciple oriented ones. The word counseling, making up your every pressure of life in the viewpoint of the word of the Lord of a God, because God the Father has all the solutions for us to give when we are his disciples. The third one, El Gebura, you are a God in the sense of 410, becoming gods to others. John 10 35, scriptures cannot be broken. So he says, To whom the word of Lord God came, you will become the word of God to those people. So Gebura, you have erected in you, in your body, the thinking structure of the mind of Christ. 
and then father of future as he calls the everlasting father and why we call over here father of future the days you are going to live on this earth you're going to get every thought into the perception like the yoke of the burden of the lord of a god which is in your body that is the will of god the father to execute and then the prince of peace having in you the umbilical cord of relationship to be oriented not just to peace by purity of relationship with god the father drawing nigh unto him once again having in your thought process to go and make disciples of all the nations and that's the blood which pumps in you and that dear brethren how many days more you want to be still for the details of life to reign in you how many days more you want to be under the ministry of kerchiefs the people who serve, who love to save the pillows and arm holes and hunt for your souls they're hunting dear brethren just look the way how they hunt whenever you have any sickness whenever you have any trouble whenever you have any problem they say come unto us we'll give you the oil you'll be praying up then they'll be clean they're hunting for your souls not to cure you but to destroy you forever and that dear brother and god the father comes up with grace to make you to understand your body is not been prepared to be a greater sacrifice for dagons your body is prepared to be a disciple oriented one like greater than the bones of elisha others when they touch when you're dead you know he was dead but we are living still we grow up five or six times like a scribe the way of the kerchiefs or the orphans fell in the power of god the father to show them signs and wonders and miracles before the completion of the can of scripture that this is the true lord of a god while we have not the completed can of scripture yet to prove that we are serving the true lord of a god by rightly dividing the word of truth he would make up the dead body is in the sense not been yet spiritually resurrected in christ to show forth to you that life is hid in Christ and let's walk according to the spirit of Christ not just your physical life again your spiritual life where with your dead and the people would come in contact to the pastor teacher to learn the word of lord god they would realize the true spiritual power given to us in the lord they would come to know this power they would come to know this impact and that dear brother and how many days more you want to live a life contrary to the will of god if every believer is called to conform to the image of christ isaiah 96 should be the shoulder blade upon them he should be a wonderful he should be a counselor he should be al gabura he should be father of the future he should be the chief of praise and in each and everything in the pictographical representation it represents to be a disciple having upon the shoulder like a gramity has grown up to pull as many as he can from the lake of fire to open up their eyes from the authority of satan to the authority of christ from the power of darkness into the power of light and to have many believers the same standards of righteousness among the same though the veil is been torn apart you haven't crossed the veil until and unless you first become a scribe grown up into the standards of the demands of the word of the lord and dear brother and this is your life If you don't become that which is the demand of the word of the Lord of a God, you will die and worry in your sickness. Because He said, "Your body, your bones, that was yet in the Old Testament, but now every believer, while they are still alive, the remata declaration of the pastor teacher, every word what they speak, occupying in the business of the Lord of a God, they can transform your life." they can change your life and dear dear brethren 
present Christendom men are not happy because they want solutions and they want to take the great cracking of their life to be separated from this world to let go the lusts of this flesh and to be well prepared to meet our Lord our God dear brethren think over these issues life is too short at the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large if it were not by the grace of the Lord of a God at a very early young age to carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God we couldn't have that shoulder blade responsibility and every believer is God possession every believer is Lord God what he has blessed them to take care of his art to be the gatekeepers of his word having to be greater wisdom than the ancients only thing to protect the word of the Lord of a God by refraining our every step from evil way to guard and to protect the word of the Lord of a God by drawing nigh and to close unto Lord God the Father so that he can draw close unto us provided when we are walking breath by breath in becoming that which is like a proselyte the Jews know very well the word proselyte the unbelievers would become a proselyte the proselytes would be accepted to the standards of Jews to call that these are worth that's the word proselyte And if you would know drawing nigh unto the Lord God is to be like a proselyte, you would really enjoy the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in your life. Because every believer at the moment of salvation, being sanctified and kept apart for the will and the work of Lord God the Father, is a greater proselyte to Christ. And yet how many days more, dear brethren, you want to live a life on this earth contrary to the will of Lord God the Father? That is left to you. Because... God the Father doesn't go against your evolution. God the Father doesn't want to make up your body to become like the bones of Elisha by making you to write six times against your evolution. You have to come by your own self. Draw nigh unto the Lord. He will draw nigh unto you. We are just showing you the panorama of the things what the word of Lord God is all about with your body on this life. And whether you want to continue in that or not, it is left to you. Whether you want to be an impact of the word of the Lord of a God, that is left to you. But the will of God the Father is not to be perished. But everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory by resisting the devil and walking breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would lead us to the praise of His glory in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So with our head, body, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In our ability to into Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That's the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believers, the greatest man is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest man is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season, not of sin, because the diamond of my witnesses have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in well Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond of my witnesses, so I hear it. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire angelic cross will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His infinite, matchless, marvelous grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is, O Lord, to understand. Every believer called to conform to the image of Christ, our Lord, our God, as Isaiah 9, 6 teaches to us. The paths that we should show to these people when you are conforming to the image of Christ as we grow up into grammatias daily carrying your cross so that they could understand the purpose of this life on this earth to become that which is right and good in your sight so that 
The bones of Elisha are nothing compared to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we have breath by breath, so that we could make each and every one to regenerate and come back from the spiritual death into spiritual aliveness and from the standards of this physical resurrection, not just to wait for, but as long as they live to understand the spiritual resurrection in Christ. So, Father, the things which you have given for us, we are drawing close unto thee, having to cross-check our lives, O Lord, search diligently, Father. If there is anything that which is against thee, O Lord, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to certainly cleanse us, catharsis us, and to make our hands to be still more worthy enough to write their word, so that we could become minimum six or seven times as you will, the scribes, and to show forth to this world that none of your promises will fail when we walk according to their will, executing to be obedient in each and every facet of this life, only to the praise of your glory and nothing else, because we cannot lose their glory in this devil world in the standards of becoming blasphemous of you, but rather we want to be that which is righteous of you, to be like your dear beloved son, walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to execute our life in becoming that which is your desire in us so that you have already blessed us and you have already made a possession in our lives to take care of your word as long as your breath in this nostrils being indwelt to be the Shekinah glory of Christ to be your living sacrifice and not a sacrifice to Dekhan. So Father we pray Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten and challenge them to become disciples oriented growing up into grammatias Nothing but only for the praise of the glory in your grace. If God be for us, O Lord, who can be against us? In each and everything we are more than conquerors to realize. Greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen.